Hi, it's me, Mr. Plumber. And in this episode, we're going to be looking at a job I just completed. It's an oil-fired steam boiler. It's a Will McLean SG04, which is a four-section oil-fired steam boiler. We're using a Beckett burner for this installation. And because this is steam, it has a low water cutoff here, which is the, the mechanical type. And um, when, the st when the water level drops below a certain level, this <coughs> safety device cuts off the power to the burner so that it, um, it doesn't fire empty. This system is also equipped with an automatic water feeder so that um, after a certain period of time, if the low water cutoff did remain in the down position while the burner was trying to fire, this low uh, this automatic feeder would add water to the boiler um, so that way the owner doesn't have to manually do it uh, and this the owner could still manually do it by just pushing this button and that activates the water it's a little solenoid in here but this is also automatically controlled by that same low water cutoff in the event that this auto feeder should falter and not work, we can always shut it off here. And right here, just below it, is a bypass. I took the handle off for safety reasons so that nobody can bump into the handle and flood the house up, as um, you can do with a steam system. And here's our backflow preventer, which is typical. This here is our uh, tankless coil. So we added a tankless coil for domestic heating, uh, for domestic hot water. The domestic hot water is regulated by this aquastat, which makes on a drop in temperature as opposed to a high limit aquastat, which opens when uh, on, on a rise in temperature. So basically, the, the cold water comes into the bottom of the coil, goes through the coil, comes out super hot. And right here is our mixing valve, which cuts the temperature down. So I have it set at 120, which is code for Massachusetts. Uh, right here is the additional cold that tempers the, the superheated water down. And here is where the hot water comes out. And this strip is what we use to actually measure the temperature. You can only use it once uh, to, set, to set the actual temperature. Every tankless system needs a pressure relief valve. Not with this pressure relief valve is different than a water heater. A water heater would use the temperature and pressure. This one is just pressure only. And um, we use the uh, watts, um, I believe it's the 53L. Yeah, 53L. The old tankless systems years ago, uh, they highly recommended installing a heat trap to keep the the heat are right off of the um, the mixing valve when it's not in use. However, I no longer do that with the spark hose uh, because these are a quality valve. They're not like those cheap little $20 valves you can get at the Home Depot. Um, these actually are <coughs> don't require a heat trap, um, and I, I stopped using the heat trap on these for quite a few years. Never had a problem. Here's our steam piping. <coughs> And this is our main steam supply coming off of the boiler. And the reason why this T is flipped up is be, uh, on the branch here is because we want dry steam coming up to, the, to feed the system. So by, by turning this up, it allows only dry steam to come up here and feed the system. Now, typically in this part of the country, when you work on steam systems, you're working in very old houses. So here's our point of connection. This is where we connect it to the existing. And you probably can't see it in this video, but this, this pipe is actually pitched. And the best way to explain steam pipe, to pipe steam piping is to think of it as a drain when you're piping it. And if you think of it as a drain while you're piping it, you never have a problem with it. Um, so that's how I always run my steam piping, steam piping, as if it were a drain. Back to our T here. This is our equalizer, which applies pressure back to the condensate coming back so that the, uh, the boiler doesn't uh, surge. 
and here's our returns and our Hartford loop. The lighting's a little poor back here. Right here, I added, added a skimming port so that we, uh, what seems a very dirty system, and we can uh, skim it later by raising the water level, taking this plug out, and skimming the oil and junk out of the, the boiler um, as because oil floats on the top of it, and it will just skim it. With this system, I added a, an additional garber filter just before the filter, uh, just before the burner. And this here is our pressure troll. And with a residential single pipe steam system, you do not want pressure. The venting is critical, however, you do not want pressure. Um, it's extremely important to have properly functioning steam vents throughout the system. And every time we replace a steam boiler, we always replace all the vents. That's standard. Um, <clears throat> the venting is extremely important because the the air is in the pipes and has to be displaced by the steam. So all the air that's in all these pipes, when it's off, has to be pushed out by the steam. And when it hits the <coughs> vent, the vent um, shuts the closes and uh, stops the steam from escaping. But when it recondenses, it opens and allows air to come back in. This is our main, one of our main steam vents. I use the number 35 on the mains. <clears throat> and um, so basically, again, the, the, this pipe is full of air. All the pipes are full of air when it's off. The steam has to push the air out uh, to, to fill the system up with steam. And when, it, when the steam reaches this point, it closes. When it recondenses back to water, it opens and allows air to come back in. So it's that constant cycle of displacing the air uh, to replacing it. 